Hello and welcome back in everybody Levi here and today I got a brand new deck tech for you out of murders at Karlov Manor This one was just spoiled yesterday It's a mono white commander and it is probably gonna be one of the most popular ones that is coming out of this set At least that we've seen so far. So let's just go into it Delny streetwise lookout two and a white for a 2-2 human scout it says creatures you control with power two or less can't be blocked by creatures with power three or greater I'll go into that ability a little bit later about how we can abuse that also if an ability of a creature you control with power two two or less triggers that ability triggers an additional time so the first time I saw this I thought it was a little redundant seeing as how we just got pressed in the vanisher and Elish nor and mother of machines last year so I was like uh, it's kind of too similar to that it's kind of doing the ETB thing but it's not really just doing the ETB thing it's doing so much more than that I think this is closer to roaming throne than anything but it's only for creatures power two or less as opposed to a certain creature type and don't think that limits the power at all like it does but there's so much insane value you can get out of these two power creatures a lot of creatures with good abilities have a low power to compensate for the fact that their ability is really strong this deck definitely is going to pack a punch no doubt about it so I'm just gonna go into the thing that probably makes the deck the strongest here we're gonna start out with the card draw obviously the first thing that comes to mind is the ETB creatures such as spirited companion one in a white for a one one enchantment creature dog when it ETBs you draw a card so with your commander out when this ETBs you draw two cards there's several of these effects at under two power in white so I don't think this deck is gonna have any problem drawing cards another one here rumor gatherer one white white two one elf wizard with alliance whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control scry one if this is the second time this ability has resolved this turn draw a card instead so the good thing about this one you don't even need two creatures to enter your battlefield you just need one draw a card and then the subsequent ones obviously you're going to scry one off of those obviously an all-star when you think of power two or less mentor of the meek two and a white for a two two human soldier whenever another creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under your control you may pay one if you do draw a card obviously with your commander you can pay two and draw two cards per creature that ETBs. Another fantastic white card that I've been putting in more decks, seeing as how it is now a budget card. Mangara the Diplomat, three and a white for a 2 4 human cleric with lifelink. Whenever an opponent attacks with creatures, if two or more of those creatures are attacking you and or planeswalkers you control, draw a card. So that's draw two cards. Whenever an opponent casts their second spell each turn, draw a card. Again, that's draw two cards. Just insane value. How about this one from Doctor Who? Wilfred Mott, three and a white for a 2 4 human soldier. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, you put a time counter on Wilfred Mott, then look at the top X cards of your life. Library where X is the number of time counters on Wilfred Mott. You may put a non land permanent card with mana value three or less from among them onto the battlefield, put the rest on the bottom in a random order. The only reason I can say not to run this is it's probably going to be taking a lot of time. Every one of your upkeeps, you put two counters on it basically, and then you have to do it twice. You can't do it both at the same time. You have to put a counter, look, choose one, put a counter, look, choose one again, then bottom them. So it will take a little bit of time, especially on every single upkeep, but I think it's just values insane here. Obviously, this isn't exactly card draw, but you are getting something off the top of your library for free out of the battlefields. It's basically card draw. Next up, up Wojek Investigator, two and a white for a two four angel detective flying vigilance. This one's a new one straight out of the same set here. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, investigate once for each opponent who has more cards in hand than you. So I usually do build a budget. This one currently is 15 bucks, but it is super early. It's pre-release prices. So I can't imagine this one sticking at that price. So similarly, we have another card out of Karlov Manor that is just obviously made for this commander because it's in the same set. Assemble the players, one and a white enchantment. You may look at the top card of your library anytime and once each turn you may cast a creature spell with power two or less from the top of your library so again not exactly card draw but you are casting stuff off the top of your library which is a card you didn't have access to before which is basically card draw and with several of our card draw pieces being on etb form i obviously threw in some blink in the deck such as you know felidar guardian three and a white for a one four cat beast when it etbs you may exile another target permanent you control then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control similarly charming prince one and a white for a two two human noble here when charming prince etbs you choose one you scry two gain three life or or blank another creature and it comes back on the next end step I like these choose one abilities on ETBs especially in this deck because we don't have to choose the same one twice we can do you know if we're really low on life we can do the gain three life or we can do the scry two and then exile another creature or we can obviously do the the blink twice however you can't blink the same creature twice with charming prince seeing as how it comes in on the next end step and white being such a powerhouse in the removal category I'm gonna go over some of the insane things you can do with white in this deck first up where Fox bodyguard Guard, one white white for a 2 2 elf fox knight with flash when it etbs exile up to one other target non fox creature until where fox bodyguard leaves the battlefield you can also pay one and a white to second gain two life which you're never going to do unless you're literally about to die however that ability triggers twice with your commander so it's three mana at flash speed to exile up to two non fox creatures and there's several of these effects at under two power in white so you can just check out the different ones to see which ones best fit your deck another card that there is several versions of but this is the newest one the battle of bywater 
one white white for a sorcery destroy all creatures with power three or greater then create a food token for each creature you control i think we have one creature in the entire deck that has power three or greater which isn't a big deal since we have most of our creatures being power two or less we want to be hating on creatures with power three or greater which i will go into some more detail a little bit later but we have several of these board wipes i think three or four that do hit the power three or greater creatures which is just a one-sided board wipe another card i absolutely love in mono white decks michiko kanda truth seeker three and a white for a two two human advisor whenever a source and opponent controls deals damage to you that player sacrifices a permanent i'm so glad it's worded that way because it wouldn't work out well in this deck if it didn't if it said like that player sacrifices that permanent it would only hit it once but since this doesn't say that if they hit you with anything either a impact tremors or a creature or anything like that they still have to sacrifice two permanents with this and your commander out people are just not going to hit you and it kind of shuts off like a perforos deck that's also really good got another choose one on etb creature dawn bringer cleric one and a white free one three human cleric when it etbs you choose one gain two life destroy target enchantment or exile target card from a graveyard for two mana you destroy two enchantments that's really good also since we have our blink options we can blink this get another two and another two and another two so fantastic removal option there another cool one i wanted to throw some mimi cards in the deck like creepy doll five mana for a one one artifact creature construct it is indestructible and whenever creepy doll deals combat damage to a creature flip a coin if you win the flip destroy that creature so i think it's pretty good odds you know 50 50 but twice that you're going to be destroying that creature since you are flipping two coins per creature so you leave this up as a blocker and it just says you can't be attacked or else there's a pretty good chance that your opponent's creature is going to be destroyed next up we have our most likely win con and that is with flooding the board with tokens now i don't really put many cards in my decks over five dollars however this was such a good card i had to throw it in here illustrious wanderglyph four and a white for a two two oh i'm so glad it's a two two artifact creature golem with ascend other artifact creatures you control get plus two plus two as long as you have the city's blessing which is not super great in our deck but we don't have that many artifact creatures so it's not really a big deal it doesn't really pair well with our creepy doll but nevertheless it's worth it for the second ability at the beginning of each upkeep your opponents included create a 1-1 one, one colorless gnome artifact creature token so that triggers twice that means on every rotation around the table in a four player game you are getting eight one ones just insane value got some more token creators though reverent hoplite four and a white for a one two human soldier when it etbs create a number of one one white human soldier creature tokens equal to your devotion to white which is obviously going to be huge because we have a lot of white permanents in the deck next up going into the ramp category for those of you who watched my favorite cards of 2023 i finally found a deck to throw one of my favorite cards in wand of the world soul two and a white for an artifact wand of the world soul enters the battlefield tapped tap to add white tap to have the next spell you cast this turn have convoke since we are in a somewhat token theme this can definitely help us power out some of our higher cost spells a little bit earlier in the game and of course we've got solemn simulacrum here four mana artifact creature golem two two when it etbs you search out a basic land from your library put it onto the battlefield tapped and when it dies you may draw a card so this is four mana ramp to draw two when it dies you can see where i'm going with this just find all these crazy little creatures that have really strong abilities at power two or less such as scare tiller four mana for a one four scarecrow whenever scare tiller becomes tapped choose one you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield which is going to be happening quite often i think since we have so much card draw tied into the deck also you can return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped if you wanted to throw in a few more fetch lands i suppose you could do that i think the only one i have in here is myriad landscape just getting those lands out of your hand because assuming you're going to have to discard two hand size since you are drawing so many cards in this deck i do like that this will let you at least ramp a couple of lands out of your hand and it's been a while since this guy's seen the light of day no doubt core cartographer three and a white for a two two core scout when it etbs you may search your library for a planes card put it on the battlefield tap then shuffle i think this one got power crept out quite a while ago at least a few years ago once they started printing a lot more white ramp spells but when it etbs you search out two planes and then you flicker it and you search out two more this is so good obviously an auto include in this type of deck got a new one here discerning financier two and a white for a two three human noble at the beginning of your upkeep if an opponent controls more lands than you create a treasure token also has an activated ability two and a white choose another player that player gains control of target treasure you control and you draw a card so just more card draw but i thought i'd throw this in the ramp because i think it's more likely that you're gonna be getting treasures out of this as opposed to the card draw and probably one of the best white ramp spells in the format right now deep gnome terramancer one and a white for a two two gnome wizard with flash whenever one or more lands enter the battlefield under an opponent's control without being played you may search your library for a planes card put it onto the battlefield tap then shuffle do this only once each turn so i'm pretty sure this one will not trigger twice because it says do this only once each turn however it might get around it with the way that your commander's worded i'm not sure i'd have to look into that specific interaction but i'm pretty sure it doesn't it may though and then seeing as how our commander is not only giving us the double etbs or double triggered abilities i suppose it also lets our power two or less creatures which is basically our entire team not be blocked by creatures with power three 
three or greater. I thought I'd throw in Coveted Jewel, six mana artifact. When it ETBs, draw three cards, tap to add three. Whenever one or more creatures in opponent control attack you and aren't blocked, they get the Coveted Jewel. So if they do happen to get in past our Creepy Doll and some of our other Pillow Fort effects, I think it'll be a lot easier to get it back in this type of deck, considering we have some ways to buff our opponent's creatures, which I will go into in just a sec. So last up here, we're talking about the utility, just general good cards that propel this strategy forward, but don't really fit in any sort of other category. So first up, I'm going to go over Meadow Boon, two white, white for a three, three. I do have a couple three threes or higher, but not many. So when Meadow Boon leaves the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature target player controls. So we're not using this on ourselves. Obviously, I threw this in here to put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature our opponent controls. Also, it has a vote for three and a white. If we get this out, everything that has two power will then become a three, three, which means it can't block our creatures. Got some other ways to add counters to our opponent's creatures. Nils, Discipline, Enforcer, two and a white, two, two, Human Cleric. At the beginning of your end step, for each player, put a plus one, plus one counter on up to one target creature that player controls, and each creature with one or more counters on it can't attack you or Planeswalkers you control unless its controller pays X, where X is the number of counters on that creature. So again, with the Pillow Fort, and again, with buffing up our opponent's creatures. However, in this one, we get to choose. If there is a creature with one or two power, obviously, we're going to throw that counter on that one, and then that means that creature is no longer eligible to block our team. Next up, similarly, Orzov Advocist, two and a white for a 1-4 human advisor. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player may put two plus one plus one counters on a creature they control. If a player does, creatures that player controls can't attack you or planeswalkers you control until your next turn. So this one is up to your opponents if they want to buff up their creature or not. So you're getting double the bonus here for one. This triggers twice because it's power two or less. They can choose. They can put two one-on-one -on -one counters on the same creature or two different creatures if they want to. However, if they do, they don't get to attack you. Also, if they put that on a one or two power creature, that just makes it uneligible to block our team, similar to the nils there. And of course, like I said earlier, we do have some power three or greater hate in here. So in a deck like this, I thought it would be pretty funny. Where else are you going to play this card except a deck like this? Marble Titan, three and a white, three, three, giant creatures with power three or greater don't untap during their controller's untap steps. So this one just completely shuts down all of your opponent's creatures that are power three or greater. Yeah, it is a little mean. I mean, I think it's fine seeing as how it's a creature, so it's really easily removed. It's not like an enchantment that some decks just can't deal with. Every deck can deal with creatures, so I don't think this one's too big a deal. Another small alt win con here. Screlv Defector Might, one mana. For a 1-1 Phyrexian Might with Toxic 1, it can't block. Also, you can pay a Phyrexian white mana and tap it. Choose a color. Another target creature you control gains Toxic 1 and Hexproof from that color until in a turn. It can't be blocked by creatures of that color this turn. So there's doing so many things that we're already looking for in this deck. You can't be blocked, so we already like that. So if there is a creature we want to get through, but one of the opponents we want to attack has a lot of 1-1s or something like that, we can obviously use this ability on it. Also, I like the Toxic because we are doing a lot of combat damage with our creatures, so that is an alt-win con if we happen to get that late in the game and we need the Toxic triggers. Similarly, I suppose you can call this an alt-win con. Suit your Priest 1 and a white. For a 1-1 Phyrexian Cleric, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain 1 life. With your commander, that's 2. Also, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, you may have that player lose one life. Again, bumped up to two with your commander. This can really hose some of those creature or token strategies, especially as early as, you know, turn three, whatever it is. Suture Priest turn two, Delany turn three, and those are the turns that your opponents are going to be casting a lot of creatures, most likely. Last but not least here, I have Storm of Souls. I've always looked for a deck to throw this in, and I figure this would be a pretty good include here. Four white, white for a sorcery. Return all creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Each of them is a 1-1 spirit with flying in addition to its other types. Exile Storm of Souls. So, hey, if you have that Marble Titan in your graveyard, it's no longer a 3-3, it's a 1-1, and you can attack with it. Not that that really matters. The thing we're really using this for is to buy back all those ETBs and things, or if we just happen to get blown out by some of our opponent's removal or board wipes or something like that, we do have one option to bring everything back to the battlefield, even though they are 1-1s, which doesn't really matter because it's all about the triggers in this deck. We're really looking for those enters the battlefield or upkeep triggers or whatever it happens to be. So that is all for Delny Streetwise Lookout. Just a fantastic command. Commander. This is definitely going to be, I think, probably one of the most popular mono white commanders in the whole format. I can see it being top five, top three, something like that. And I'm not sure if it'll be top one. People do like their value commanders, especially in mono white. So I think this one's definitely going to see a ton of play. And I can imagine it probably will be a little unfun to play against. If you wanted to check out the full deck list, I have the architect link down in the description. So go ahead and give that a click if you'd like. What do you guys think of Delny and Murders at Karlov Manor in general? Go ahead and leave me a comment down below telling me your thoughts on some of the new creatures from the set. Who are you thinking of building? I'm definitely going to be having a few more deck techs up in the next couple of days for some of the new commanders that are being spoiled that 
that I think sound fun to build around. But that's all I got for today. So thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, take care.